Right now at five, they had loved ones whose bodies were attacked by a rare but deadly disease caused by dog saliva. And now two local families are working together to get more answers. Health experts agree it is rare for bacteria from a dog's lick to threaten the life of a person. But here in southeast Wisconsin, there were two cases within weeks affecting families who live less than an hour from each other. New at five, Katie Crow, they're live in the newsroom with more on their mission, Kate. Yeah, Carol and Steve, the CDC claims there were 12 reports of the dog lick bacteria in our country over the past year, but testing and reporting it is sometimes never done. After our story on a local death last week, people have been writing in questioning how cases are monitored. We're past the point of being able to change what happened to my mom, but we're not past the point of being able to change what happens in any possible future cases. Stephen Larson's mom, Sharon, died in June from a bacteria in dog saliva. That same month, Greg Manteifel had his hands and legs amputated because of it. It definitely raises that question in your mind. Is it as rare as they say and they think it is? Stephen and I have received messages from all over the country. Rita Gallegos emailed from California about her sister, who narrowly survived a face infection from the dog saliva bacteria. Between the two Wisconsin cases and my sister, that's three in a very short time of something that is normally quite rare. I'm hoping we can find out why we are suddenly seeing a rise in it, she said. Learning of the other person in St. Louis that you know just commented on a Facebook link and said they lost their father. When I reached out to the CDC, a rep said they don't track this bacteria. It's up to state health departments to report cases to them. But the state tells me the bacteria is not reportable to the Wisconsin Department of Health Services or the CDC. So there is no specific info on the number of people affected. I'd love to know what are the real stats of this bacteria. Who do I call to say, hey, let's make a change. A representative from the CDC says because most public health labs can test for the bacteria, they often don't send samples to the CDC. Carolyn Steve. This is extremely puzzling. Katie, thank you very much.